Now, mathematicians and computer scientists like to talk about the notion of a binomial coefficient. And when we write these numbers in line, like in a line of text or in a computer program, then they're written just the way I just introduced them to you. The number of combinations of 38 objects taken 17 at a time is the number of permutations of 38 objects taken 17 at a time divided by 17 factorial. And if I want to get rid of the p notation, I can express that using factorials as well. And that's just 38 factorial over 21 factorial times 17 factorial. But there's a graphic notation for binomial coefficients, which is quite popular. And researchers and students actually prefer this one to the inline anytime they're working on a board or anytime they're working in a paper. So if you look at a mathematics or computer science paper that discusses binomial coefficients, you will not see them written in line. Oh, very, very rarely. Usually you will see them written in this graphic form with the big parentheses. And it looks like there's a numerator and a denominator. But, but don't think of it as a numerator and a denominator. And in particular, don't draw a little horizontal line in there. That will confuse everybody. Just put one on top, one on bottom. M, choose N. And that, that's the way you read that notation. You don't say left parentheses 38 on top of 17 right parentheses. You say 38 choose 17. M choose N in general, 38 choose 17 in this specific case. Now, why do people prefer that? I don't know. I just see it. I feel it. When I read it horizontally, 38, 17, I don't, it doesn't mean anything. I don't get it in here. But 38, you said, it means something to me. And that somehow, it's hard to explain why that's the case. You know, why, what constitutes a beautiful poem versus just a string of sounds? I don't know. It, there's a difference. OK, now the basic definition of 38 choose 17, as we've already noted, is 38 factorial over 17 factorial times 21 factorial. So if, if you really needed to know what that number was, and you had a big garbage bag to open up and do the calculations on, it looks to me like you're going to have to do a lot of multiplication in the numerator. Then you're going to have to do a lot of multiplication in the denominator multiply these two together, and then divide it into that one. Well, it's not that bad, because the 38 factorial, say, over the 21 factorial, there's a lot of cancellation that takes place. And that gets you back to the permutation problem, because it then becomes 38 times 37 times 32, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then it goes down to 22 and stops. 21 on down, cancel. But you still have to do 38 times 37 times 36 all the way down to 22. And you have to divide that by 17 times 16 by 15. 40. OK, you can drop off the 1 at the end. That's not much of a savings. That's a lot of multiplication done twice and then a division. It isn't even obvious to me. That is an integer, but it is. You're counting something. That's an integer. But I, I don't like to do multiplication. And I, and I mean, actually, I do. I, I really, you know that. I'm kind of weird in that way. But you probably don't like to do multiplication. And you probably really don't like to do division. So maybe, maybe there's a different way to calculate binomial coefficients without doing all of that multiplication and division. Yeah, maybe we should be on the lookout for that. Beware dot, dot, dot. Look out. Danger is lurking. 
Do you remember your SAT test and other IQ type tests that you've taken back in high school and even earlier, where they would ask you something like this, they would give you five terms of a sequence and ask you what's the next term? If you were taking one of those tests, what would you say is the answer for the first question? What's the next term? 36. Anybody would say anything else? For the second one. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. What's the next one? 21. Anybody would say anything else? Say. Somebody said 21, but are you saying 20? I wonder how you, so he's saying 20. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. How would you get 20? Okay, okay. So you're, you're getting it by adding the preceding two terms, right? Question, what is the sum? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 plus 6. What would your answer be? 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 6 is 21, you would answer 21, wouldn't you? And then I ask you this, what's really meant by these definitions? N factorial is N times N minus 1 times N minus 2 times dot, 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 down to 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, the number of permutations of m things taken n at a time is m times m minus 1 times n down to m minus n plus 1. What do those phrases really mean? Is there any ambiguity there? And there's lots. So when you were taking those IQ tests and they ask you, what's the next term? Your absolute correct answer would be, how would I know? That's a stupid question. Now, you, you flunk the test, and you'd be over at Kennesaw if you had done that. But uh, I'm not really trying to disparage Kennesaw. I really should have said you would have been at UGA. Then I will disparage all the time. OK. Uh, and, and so you didn't. You answered the questions. You said, now, I, I, I know it's a bad question, but I'm going to answer it because they're idiots. And, okay. And you did. But here's a better way. Why don't you just be explicit and say, I'm thinking of a sequence, and the nth term, a n, is n squared? Now, now, all the potential confusion just evaporates. So we, we want to look for ways, whenever possible, Wherever it makes sense, maybe not universally, but wherever it makes sense, we want to just be explicit and say a n is n squared. Second example, rather than writing that sequence that way, why don't we explain what's going on? The first term is 1. The second term is 1. And thereafter, you get the next term by adding the sum of the preceding two. Now, that's explicit. You can explain that to anyone. You can even teach that to a computer. Computers, do, they like spaces. They understand spaces. They do not understand dot, dot, dots. This is a good way to talk to a machine. A better way to say 1 plus 2 plus up to 6 is to Say what you really mean, if that's what you mean. Say, I mean the sum of the first six positive integer, and that should be integers. Now, in the English language, we, we know that there are these positive integers, and we know there's an order, and they, they come one, two, three. We know, there, we know these things. So if you say add up the first six positive integers, that's more explicit. But here's a better way. And better way is to, to essentially define a little loop. And so you initialize the loop by saying S0 is 0. 
more or less you're saying if you don't add up anything, you don't get anything. But then if you know what the nth term is and you want to define the next term, you say Sn is n plus Sn minus 1. And now, if I want to add up the first six, I just say S6. If I want you to take the first 10, I say S10. You see, now I have them all. I have a precise definition for any value. This is a much better way. And again, you can communicate with a computer in this way quite well. Yeah, now, here's some, some examples involving our factorials. To be explicit about what a factorial is, you can use the same basic principle, even starting with zero. Zero factorial is taken to be one. Uh, by the way, if you don't add up anything, you don't get anything. So usually sums, when you don't have uh, anything in it, you take to be zero. But products, when you don't have anything in them, you take the product to be one. So if you want some intuition, how many combinations of no things, taking none at a time are there, there's one, the empty set. And the empty set is not the same as the set which contains the empty set. The set which contains the empty set is no longer empty. So there's one. All right, so now if I really need to know five factorial, then I get it by saying 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial. Well, I don't know what 4 factorial is, but I find it because I say 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial. And now I go through a loop until I get down to 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial, but I know what 0 factorial is. So now I backtrack, and I've done that on the bottom of the slide, and I wind up with the computation that 5 factorial is 120. But do you see that that is explicit, as opposed to when I say 5, ta five factorial is 5 times 4 times dot, 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 down to 1. That's not. OK, now, how do we communicate with a machine? We'll get to that. But here's the same thing done for permutations. I've, I now want to uh, compute the number of permutations of seven things taken four at a time, and I write out what the computations would give, and then I backtrack to get that P74 is 840. Now, you see, you would say, well, P74 is 7 times 6, dot, 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 down to what? 7 minus 4 plus 1 is, is 4. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And so you would get 840. OK, now how to write this as a code. Here's, a, again, a, a little code snippet. Uh, and so you declare that you're going to create a function, call it factorial. And you're going to input an n in that parentheses with int n or inside it. It says, I'm going to input an integer. And then the int at the beginning of it, where you say int factorial, says I, the output is also going to be an integer. So the first line, all it does is declare to the compiler that there, there's going to be a, a, a definition later, be on the lookout for a function. In modern C and C++, you have to have a declaration of a function. Back in the old K and R days, you didn't do that. But that was back when your parents were kids long before you were born. All right, so then you, you do a definition. The, the function is, if n is 0, and I, I, you probably are all familiar with the idea that when you are making a test in most programming languages, if you're going to use equality as a test, you, you put a double equal sign. That's a test, whereas if you just put 1, that's an assignment. So that will, if you write if n equals 0, then that will make n 0. That's not what you intend. You want to ask, is n equals 0? So you use a double equal sign. So if n is 0, return 1. In other words, 0 factorial is 1. But if 
you know, any other value, else return n times factorial of n minus 1. Now, most modern programming languages will handle structures and programs like this no problem. But let's make a pause right here. And this is for the computer scientists in the room, which is most of you, but not all of you. What potential trap are you walking yourself into with little programs like this? You're using the stack. You're putting a lot of stuff on the stack. And then you have to recurse through that to unwind the stack. And that's bad programming practice. And so program, skilled programmers, even unskilled programmers, even programmers from UGA will go to some lengths to avoid a recursion that puts a lot of information on the stack. Good compilers will take care of that for you. They will rewrite that code snippet and turn it into a loop which uses no memory. So that's, that's an aside. But from a mathematical standpoint, what you don't care about these things. Uh, a recursive definition like this, uh, you, you don't care about the, the memory concerns on the stack. Uh, and here's a modestly more complicated way that you could define the permutation function. It returns an integer. But now the, in the input, there are two values. There's a int m and an int n. And what is the definition? So if n is 1, you simply return m. You've given n and m, and if the second one, if n is 1, you just return m. That's the value. Number of permutations of m things taken one at a time is just m. Otherwise, you return m minus n plus 1 times the permutation of m n minus 1. And again, that's a recursive definition, but computers are completely happy with that. And so are mathematicians. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'm assuming that independent of your knowledge of programming languages, that the conversation that we have just had make sense to all of you. Not any real programming requirement, but, but still, this, this should make sense to you. 